Top of the morning to all you audio nerds out there. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing the next level in Nerdology, doing a DIY kit, building your own 1176 Revision F. Um, this isn't a beginner build, this is an intermediate thing for sure. But the point of this video is to show you guys how I went through it and how I solved some of the challenges so that you guys hopefully can learn something and move forward. Cause that's the point of this stuff is for you guys to learn. So, all right, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, first, I wanna go over the tools. This is an intro video, so we'll go over the tools that we need and everything you should have before you get started, as well as a quick unboxing of the kit to see what it looks like when everything comes down the pipe. So I'm gonna kinda go around the horn here and go over a few things. So, nothing, this is in no particular order. First tool you'll need is a multimeter, like this little, got this little fluky 101. This does the job, it'll pop up to ohms resistance, which is really important for measuring resistors. Uh, alternating voltage, direct voltage, all that good stuff, as well as a one like a frequency reader right there. Uh, mostly we're going to balance in the alternating current and the uh, ohm loan rage uh, for these guys. So as long as it's, it does a decent job measuring that stuff, that's cool. All right, next thing, I like to do a small fan when we're soldering. I got this little desktop fan. I don't know, pick one, get one from wherever. This was like I think fifteen dollars. And I just blow it across my face on low speed because there's lots of fumes and stuff. And we're going to be using lead-based solder, solder for this build. So we definitely want to take care because we don't want things to start to taste like the color orange. Um, all right, soldering iron, really important. Uh, temperature control on your soldering iron. Uh, I'm soldering today because I'm using lead-based solder on PCB. I'm on the hotter side of things. I'm at 290C. Uh, so if you guys want to, you know, finagle with that, it's pretty hot. So I try to move quick but it's hot enough to, to work quick. Uh, that being said, when soldering, we don't use a sponge. We use a copper coil sponge. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say we don't use a wet sponge. Wet sponges cool the tip and fatigue the metal so they don't work as well. So we like the nice copper guy. It breaks off all the little solder bits down here in this bottom section. All right, moving over here. Screwdrivers, I got a little stubby one just in case. So this tough type inside there, a good, you know, multi-purpose screwdriver, flatten, flatten Phillips. And then this guy, this is great because I've got small Phillips, I've got small flat heads that I can use to pry stuff. It's even got star locks and stuff like that for other types of drivers. So a few screwdrivers. Wire strippers, you'll need this for the output transformer, or you'll need to strip some small wires. It's a lot easier with a good tool, especially when the wires are small because you don't have a lot to work with. Um, pliers and such. Got a couple different needle nose ones here that have helped me. Believe it or not, these bent ones came in handy quite a bit to grab stuff and hold stuff and put it on the board. So I like the little bent needle nose, they're great. Uh, straight needle nose and extra long needle nose for some tight reach places. Mostly though, you really can get by with this if you really you know, had a gun to your head. Hopefully you don't have any weapons to your head. Uh, nut driver, not absolutely essential, but it makes your life easier. Here's a multi one, you know, ideally, haha, you get something like this. Uh, and super important is a really good sharp set of trimmers. Uh, I can't tell you how many times this helped me when I had a little too much solder, cut it off the back end so I don't have a potential short. Um, I like to have a little masking tape in this scenario and something to write with because we're gonna be sorting resistors and diodes and all kinds of stuff and it's easy just to take a piece of tape, you know, write down, okay, this is a one, mega ohm resistor tear it off and I've got five of them and I can just tape them to the back of this and stick them off to the side like that so I don't get confused really easy they're tiny and they're easy to mess up all right and another thing too lead bender when I put the resistors and the diodes over stuff I'll pop them in there bend the leads bam ready to hit the board and solder this is a Kester leaded solder what's cool about this other than the fact of its composition is it's thin so it's really, really small, small end right here. And so we're doing really tight solder jobs. We don't need a giant fat wad of solder coming out. So suggestion, this solder works great. A buddy of mine pointed it out to me. Here is the code if people want to go on the internet and research it. Call me lazy, but I didn't put a link in the description. All right, and a mat so you can work. So you don't burn things like your table, like this really cheap table I have underneath here but the solder mat keeps things okay. All right, so without further ado, let's get to what's inside the box. 
So I already took this out one time, full disclosure. So it's not a true unboxing. But here's what you get. First things first, we do the big pieces. This is part of the chassis. This is the sides and back of the chassis. Right here, we got the silk screen. So what all the buttons do, you can kind of figure out this is the back, you know, power, fuse rating, the switch to go from 240 to 110. This will come back and forth in the build a couple times in the beginning and towards the end. The front face plate, I love on the Rev F that they put this red stripe on there. I think it looks really cool. And we don't need to. Then of course this is these are just steel top and bottom plates, and they are steel, so they're heavy. Which, you know, gives you that whole oh if it's heavy, it must be a nice thing. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I have an iPad back here, I'll pull it into the thing, that has hairball's instructions, okay? One thing I want to say right now is that hairball has made amazing instructions, and barring a couple tiny things that I noticed, it's, it's pretty damn comprehensive. You can't go wrong just reading their instructions and working. I'm just doing a video so we can see some stuff. Um, all right, this is the box of all the goodies. So we open this up. And we see all the stuff. We've got our PCB right here. That's the main PCB. And we have a section of daughter PCBs right here that have other stuff like the power supply connector, the ratio switches, as well as, <laughs> this is running away, <laughs> ratio switches, all that stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the gain reduction switches and all that. All right. So moving on. So inside we have things broken up pretty nice. The first the first video, which is the next video come, we're gonna be doing the power supply and that's gonna be contained almost entirely in these two boxes. There's a couple small resistors we're gonna have to grab, but we'll get to that later. So the power supply is broken up into these two boxes with the directions. Uh, after that we have like, we start to get into the actual components like diodes, resistors and stuff, uh, transistors, all that jazz. And those are all in here broken up into what they are and what they're used for. So it'll break like resistors, for example, like this says, resistors uh, that are less than 100 kilo ohm. So you'll see it's broken up on a sheet right here, the solder, which is another reason why, a little area to write. And this has got all the individual components right here and descriptions of what they are and the designation on the board. On the board itself, on the silk screen for a resistor, for example, say R65, R64, R62. And it corresponds to the actual one on here. Online as well, there is an interactive map of the thing, which I really like as well. The interactive map, I can touch a resistor and say, all right, this resistor, where does it go? And it'll highlight the area on the board for a quick version to find it. Um, connectors, controls, like things like the XLR connectors on the back, JST connectors and screws, obviously screws, you know what those are for. JST connectors are the little connectors that allow you to snap on the daughter boards and to get everybody talking to each other. Um, we've got our switches and our meters, we've got our knobs, and this is the power transformer right here. This box is the VU meter right here, and then right here you see I have one called Active Link. I went ahead and bought the Active Link mod because like I said, this is my second build, so I'm going to be using this in conjunction with the other one, so I have an operating stereo pair. As you guys know, I'm a mainly, I shouldn't say mainly, but I'm a mix engineer. That's what I was what I specialize in. So I wanted a pair so I could actually hit buses with this stuff and do some fun audio damage that way. Anyway, that's the basic gist of what you get in the box right there. Boom, this is all the meat and potatoes. You get your other components over there, your chassis parts. That stuff's right there. And yes, as you see, all buttons in. That's where it gets fun. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, Next video is going to be putting together the power supply, as you can see on the iPad. Bam, locked and loaded, ready to go. All right, so we'll be doing the power supply next. And I've broken this into four videos. So we have the power supply through testing the power supply to make sure you're not going to set yourself on fire. It's an important one. That's probably like a two to three hour job. And then each video after that is subsequently a two to three hour job. I broke part two in their instructions into two videos, which is the populating the PCB section. That was like a six to seven hour maneuver um moving at a decent pace uh, so i broke that up into two sections so each video hopefully is somewhere between two and four hours depending on your speed of work if you're a seasoned solderer 
and this is not your first time doing stuff on PCB, well then you may blow through these videos in two hours and you may be on top of it. I took my sweet time and I wanna say it was like three to three and a half hours per section that I got coming up. Anyway, so building power supply comes next and we will take it from there. So I hope you guys enjoy, see ya.